We have been traveling the rich lands of East Africa, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful region, talking to farmers wherever we go. We have given them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey across East Africa and share the family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shepap Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shepa. We have traveled all over Kenya and met many farmers. We have decided to cross the borders and meet other farmers and exchange farming techniques. Welcome to the land of a thousand waterfalls. We are in Uganda! Welcome to Shamba Shepa. We are in Shikovero, in Sironko district, Uganda. And we're about to meet an elderly couple who definitely needs a Shepa. Let's go meet them. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Panyako. Yes. Thank you very much for welcoming us in Chikovero. Mm. I've never come across the name Panyako. What does Panyako mean? means that people, are, they went into a Second World War, uh -huh. when they're just coming back and they call it Panyako. So your father, uh, straight from the war, decided, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll remember the war yeah. by naming my son after the war. Yes. So now you're Panyako. Yeah, I'm Panyako. Beautiful name. Yeah. Very unique. <laughs> Lorda. Wanje. Wanje, how are you? I'm fine. What are you farming here in your shamba? I'm farming coffee, beans, Mm -hmm. uh, Maidi in English, they say what? Maize, Maize. Mm -hmm. granuts, yes. and the others. Uh, you have cows? I've got one cow here. Mm -hmm. And how is the cow? It's, you know, it's good by the way, but because I don't know, <laughs> because I'm not a doctor. Uh -huh. <laughs> you need expert advice? I need the expert from you. So now, when you farm here, Panyako, which are the main problems are you having with your crops, especially your crops? I've seen there is a disease which I don't know they came to destroy microbes, especially maize. Does anybody help you in the farm or you're just by yourself? When I, I get something like a bunch of, uh, of banana, I give mm -hmm. somebody and they come to, <laughs> to help me. So when you don't have money, you use the same crops yes. in the farm yes. to pay as labor. Exactly. Wow. Yes. You're very smart, Panyako. Uh, I'm very smart because I'm working very hard. <laughs> yes, yes. Of course, of course, of course, That is of very smart. Yes. You know? Anyway, Mr. Panyako, we are here and we are coming with uh, experts. Yeah. And we will see where we can help in the farm to make you, Mr. Panyako, a better farmer. How does that sound? I'm very, very, very pleased. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Now me, I'm thinking of picking up a unique name, just like Panyako. Which name do you think suits me best? Uh, let me see. Uh, huh. uh, Tony Shambako. Let's divide the work. What do you want to start with? <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, I'm going to start with climbing beans and also seeds. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm going to check on why their, their crops are not doing too well. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I'm going to check on Panyako's cow and see how I can help out. Okay. There's lots of work to be done, Naomi. So. Do you end it? Do one. Panyako is very proud of his cow, but I'm sure there are a few things to shape up. An expert has come from Iram to tell us how to improve his cow and his shed. Ben, good to see you. I saw you are here at the cattle shed observing. What did you see for yourself? When you look at the shed itself, uh, for example, it can even allow rain to come in and then it can flood the whole thing. I can see it has some scratches on it, meaning that the nails somehow get to pierce it. Uh, that floor can really predispose the animal to food problems, like even food rot, because that tumor of those protruding, they are stony like, uh, mushy. So if they continue um, trying to traumatize the flow of the food, you can have uh, the animal uh, having uh, serious challenges. Yes. Looks like the feeding, that is fine. So another area we would look at is perhaps now disease control. Which is one of those most common diseases? The most economically devastating disease 
here in this country is East Coast fever. So where exactly does ECF come from? It's propagated by a tick, it's usually called a brown ear tick, and it usually prefers, you can get it around the ear or the head of the animal. That's why they prefer to bite most. How devastating is East Coast fever? The mortality rates are high. They kill animals, that is the, the, most, the, the worst. They reduce production of the animal up to 70%. Even a retarded growth, they can even become permanently blind. How about cows that are in calf? It can actually cause uh, abortion. So what are the symptoms of ECF? Swelling around the lymph node areas, usually here, the soldier uh, lymph node, and then around the ear. The, the temperature goes high, the animal becomes dull, and then in an advanced stage, the animal can go down. So, Ben, is there a vaccine for ECF? There is a vaccine. Uh, now, this vaccine, mm -hmm. how do you apply it? Do you apply it every day to the cow, once mm -hmm. in 10 years? How? How? It offers a lifelong immunity once used on the cow. So you vaccinate once in a lifetime. So once in a lifetime. Once in a lifetime. We can start thinking about vaccinating it mm -hmm. yeah. while we construct Cross the cattle shed. With all the points from Ben, we had to bring down the old shed and start on building a new one. Some of the camera crew had to give Caris and I a hand. Where are you headed to? I'm heading to uh, to deal with beans. Mm -hmm. Yes. What kind of beans are these? Uh, these are climbing beans. I'll see you later, Naomi. Okay, see ya. Panyakor grows many different crops, but does not seem to make much money. An expert from Asareka is here to have a look and give us some tips. Isaac, so looking around Panyakor's garden, mm -hmm. yeah, what is your general observation? He has almost everything on his garden, cropped in. He has cassava, beans, maize, vegetables, in the same small garden. Yes, <laughs> so, <laughs> but we can improve on what we have seen. Yes. Divide into smaller fields. Separate say this is for cassava, this is for maize, this is for beans. In that way you will improve on sort of fertility management. To fight disease and pests by doing crop rotation is by denying the pest or the disease food at a given time. Where there was maize, you can put beans. Because for example, beans is a nitrogen fixing crop, so it will add some nitrogen in the soil. We have one of the, the beans here, this one here. It's called in Abbey Twelve Sea. It's a climbing bean variety. It's a high yield. It tastes nice. So if you saw any bean variety with a C, then that one is a climber. Since your land is very small, I would recommend a climbing bean variety for your shamba. Reasons. It yields about four times the bush types. If this one had five pods, then this one will have 20. <laughs> yes. Are, are you okay now? Yes. You understand yes. it? Very yes. Yes. Another advantage of this variety is highly marketable, both in the dry form and the fresh form. When you soak it, it swells uniformly. When you boil it, it doesn't spool it. Uh, it's really, it's excellent, and it's a sugar type. Yeah. <laughs> it's very marketable. Highly marketable. Yeah. We, yeah. So, yeah. That's why we are saying. That's why we are saying now. So if you planted this, then you know. First of all. You have food at home. Mm. Food security, you are assured. Yes. The key thing in, 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 the, in the climbing beans is what? What makes it different is the yield, uh, the market, and its attributes on Okani. It would be best if you planted in lines yes. because of easy management. Okay. Eh? For example, the field operation is the weeding, staking, yeah, yeah. and the spraying if you have to spray. The spacing from one line to another is 50 centimeters. Then from one plant to another is 20 centimeters. And you put one bean per hole. Plant when you are sure the rains have started. With the climbing, you can even start staking the very day you plant, it does no harm. So you start putting in your stakes, and each stake is about two meters, about my height. If it is very high, the bean, instead of bearing fruits, 
will spend all the energy climbing, climbing, climbing. By the time it reaches up here, imagine that is that was a hill. It has lost all the energy. It can't bear fruits now. It's too tired. So about two meters is the optimum. At that height, then it starts producing branches and flowering, and you have very many fruits. Yeah. If you planted like uh, one kilo here, you can even get 40 kilograms out of that plus. Mm -hmm. uh, what about harvesting? It almost matures at the same time. Uh -huh. uh, about uh, 120 days, they are ready for harvesting. Yeah. And uh, when harvesting, uproot the whole, the whole steak. Okay. Uh, harvest, dry within the garden, thresh bit by bit. Uh, you thresh, you split the pods. The trash you leave in the garden, after you will be even bring back the nutrients in the soil. You know, whatever you carry, that means you are carrying food for the next plant home to burn. <laughs> eh? You see, you are burning food hey. now for the crops. But if you left it behind and plowed it in, then you are adding value again to the soil for the next, next crop. Thank you so much, Isaac, for okay. such a nice and interesting uh, explanation. You've understood as much as you talk. Lorna, you have understood? Yes, you heard Okay, so, so can you show us out then how to plant? Okay. Yes. When planting climbing beans, prepare the land and break up the soil. Mark out lines 50 centimeters apart. In the case you don't have a tape measure, just use your fingers. Yes. Eh? Then you make one and a half feet. Like this. Just like this. That's one foot. Mm. Then you add a half. Mm. Then you break. Mm. This is about 50 centimeters. Very fast. It's easy. <laughs> hmm? yeah. That is the line done. Make holes 20 centimeters apart and plant one bean per hole. Plant the beans at the start of the rains so they grow well. <laughs> but she's good. Good, good, Mama. <laughs> Tell me what's going on? Huh? I heard these noises from the cows, man. What's going on? I mean, are you having a cow market? <laughs> Of course not, Naomi. You know, one vaccine of ECF can vaccinate up to 40 cows. So John organized with the villagers to bring all the cows here today yeah. for vaccination. It's a huge, huge cow gathering. Cows from over the village. Really? They're having a great. meeting here. Yeah, it looks like a whole cow shepherd. <laughs> we are shaping up the whole village. Yes. I can tell you that. <laughs> the vets have brought the ECF vaccine with them. They have a lot of training on how to give the vaccine properly. And first, they have to check the health and the weight of each animal. The vaccine is then given and the animal tagged with a unique number. The vaccine can only be given to animals which are over one month old, healthy and not pregnant. While the neighbor's animals get vaccinated, the shed construction carries on. The tent that was on top of the cattle shed is gone. Right. And the cattle shed is coming up so nicely. How about you? Oh, well, we've been planting uh, climbing beans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's lots, lots more right after the break. Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. We are still in Chikovero. In Sironko, Uganda, where there's lots and lots of work to be done. So let's get on with it. Panyako's farm is a mix of many crops and trees. I wonder if he's doing it the right way and if he's planting the right seeds. An expert from Naro has joined us. He's loaded with advice for Panyako, who is eager to learn. Frank, you've had a look at uh, Panyako's garden. So what is your general observation? It has quite a number of challenges. First of all, this is a small piece of land. He has told me it's just one and a half acres. And on this small piece of land, is having so many crop enterprises. Annual crops, perennial crops, uh, deep-rooted crops, you know, shallow-rooted crops, it's quite 
a mixture of several of them. And secondly, the management is just a very poor in supporting us. Well. I've also observed that the farmer is interested in, in the trees despite having a, a small piece of land. Agroforestry is the way to go these days. But he has to be careful on which type of trees to include in, on his farm. He need to go for trees which actually don't drain the soil a lot. Uh, for gravelia is fast growing and then you can get timber from it. Yeah, so that is encouraged. His piece of land is on a slope. If land is on a slope area, I would expect him to have a way of conserving water. And even you realize that the quality of planting material is not good, the source of seed, it might not be the right one. So when a farmer is buying seeds, now mm. what should he consider? The major thing to consider is the source of seed. And then secondly, after identifying the source, when do you buy the seed? Most of the seed companies are authentic. The only challenge is some of those seed companies might not be present in our area here of Sironko. Yeah. yeah. But they have agents. When the, the season is beginning and you want to buy your seed, sometimes they are likely to buy fake seed. Yeah. Or seed which stayed, yeah. eh? which was not bought last season. And most of the time, it has lost its viability. Yeah. It cannot germinate properly. Yes. Yeah. Supposing you have identified genuine seed from a seed agent, mm. go and buy early enough. Okay? Yeah. As the season begins, you are not struggling to look for seed, but instead you are going to plant. So normally when you buy this seed, you have to look at the packaging. It helps you to verify whether it is genuine seed. If you find that some of the details, especially the shelf life of the seed is not there, uh, the seed lot number is not there, even the name of the seed company and the, the, the detailed contacts are not there, then probably it's fake seed. But we have crops like bananas. Where do you get the planting material? You rather go and get the, the planting materials from the research organization. So Fanya Kao, you've had, right? What the experts said. So there's, there's, a, there's good information, isn't it? Yeah. Eh? Yes. So when you practice, <laughs> you get more money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is yeah. good. Which Looks like this cow shed will be a good one. Karis is in a hurry to ensure it's done in time. <laughs> well, Panaj Kao has learned about farm management. I mean, he's been planting everything together. Now he knows better. Mm -hmm. We've also learned about seeds, where to get the best seeds and quality seeds. Mm -hmm. Yes, what about you? We need to take him to a soil expert so that he can learn about the fertility of his soil. Mm -hmm. And then he can apply what he has just learned from you mm -hmm. together with his soil fertility and see how the results will be. Okay. And I'm sure you're going to make him a better farmer, truly shaped up. That's right. Lots of work See to be done. Soil nutrition is key in ensuring he get maximum yield and good profits. Panyako is not sure about fertilizers. And who better to help than our friends from Mayor? Mr. Panyako. Yes. Sir. Have you used any fertilizer in your farm of late? Someone, uh, I gave me an idea, mm -hmm. said that don't use the fertilizer of European people and use this organic for the, from the cow dung and, and the rest. Mm -hmm. So you are told never to use fertilizer from the shop? Yes, they told me like that. Okay, Mr. Nguni, you had for yourself and you are <laughs> holding some evidence for us. Yeah, yeah. Tell us everything. Uh, even before he told me, I realized that uh, it's like these farmers never seen fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Yes, the crops are totally struggling. At this uh, height, they are um, starting to tussle. That means they are deficient. The, the, the field is uh, deficient. It doesn't have nutrients. And if there is very little, that they cannot support his crops. It's good to use your organic fertilizer from the cow and the rest. But mostly, it's never enough. So what you need to do is you need to supplement. You go buy the inorganic fertilizer, then you come and use them. Are there any other symptoms that can assist the farmer to detect that their soil is lacking something? When you see the, the, the margins of your, for example, maize, the margins, eh, that they are turning purplish. You know, this is severe deficiency. That's why you see the home of the whole leaf is turning purplish. That shows that your field lacks uh, enough phosphorus. To boost phosphorus, to remove this deficiency from the field, 
you need to use a fertilizer with a high phosphorus. For example, like uh, TSP, you can use uh, DAP, NPK 1246. The phosphorus will assist your crop mm. to develop good rooting system. Mm. These roots are shallow. The good rooting system will be able to pick nutrients from the soil yes. for the crop to grow. And when you see your leaves are yellowish, that means it doesn't have enough nitrogen. So you need to top dress with the either urea or CAN. Even standardness, when the, the, the crop is not growing very fast as required, it's struggling to grow. That means it's lacking some nutrients in the, in the soil. I'm seeing you holding coffee berries or something. Yes, this is just nutrient deficiency. Dieback is when a twig starts dying from where it's supposed to grow backwards. So when you look at the coffee plantation around, you see that most twigs are dying from where it's supposed to grow backwards towards the, towards the stem. So that's what they call dieback. That's just a deficient. And also the berries don't form to the tip. It has formed from the beginning a little bit, then it starts drying up. That's a deficient sign. Now this year, yes, mm -hmm. I got a, uh, a loss. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you <laughs> follow that advice and you got a loss. Yes. But next year, you get profits. Which is so good. Yes. I'm very happy. Right. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much, Mr. Aguilar. <laughs> Thank you. When applying any fertilizer to coffee bushes, make a shallow trench around the plant a distance of the same width spread as the leaves. Sprinkle a mug full of fertilizer and cover with soil. This should be done during the rainy season or with a lot of water. The cows are vaccinated. The shed is coming along well. Now we need to know about general health and care for the animals. Our experts from Coopers has a look at the animals. So let us find out what are his observations. Sami, as you can see, lots of work is going on to build a new cattle shed. How do you like it? It is right to build a cattle shed mm -hmm. because it is safer for an animal to be under a shed mm -hmm. than being tethered in the bush. We would like now to go to the feeding the cow that is in calf for eight months. Uh -huh. Where do we start from, Sami? When you feed an animal well, you give it life. The fact that that animal is pregnant and is due to calf down, you even give good health to the calf which is inside, which is going to be born. And you can expect a very good milk yield and sustainable milk yield when it is, she has finally given birth. Yes. Yes. Now, Panyako, yes, what sir. do you feed your cow on? I give uh, grass. Grass alone? Yes, sir. Is good. Yeah. But it would be better yeah. if the animal was eating various varieties of grass. No more grass, the common one we see, elephant grass, yeah. maize stock, and etc. Then there is also what we call legumes, but most importantly, mineral salts and feed supplements. There is a, a feed called Kupakula Gold. Kupakula is very important for a lactating animal, and that's an animal which is producing milk. Remember when an animal is producing milk, it is taxing its system. It's taxing, it's taxing its body. It is taxing its reserves in the body. Right now you look at it, it is very fat. But if you only fed it on the grass alone and the water, and it produces milk for only two months, you'll find it is so bony and skinny. Do you know why? <laughs> Yet right now it is fat. It is it's because all the reserves that were in the body have been taken away. So it is very important to give the animal supplements, mineral supplements, and um, supplements in feed form, yeah. with partial reference to Kupa Kula. Well, what have you brought for him today? This mineral block mm. is what the animal should have at any other time of its life. I'm yeah. seeing other items here, Sami. What are these? I've brought for him Makalik Super. So what exactly is this? Makalik Super contains a variety of minerals. The most important ones are calcium and phosphorus. It is needed by that animal in its pregnancy, from the seven month to the ninth month. Now, this animal is eating from the ground. Yeah. The grass, other animals have passed there. It is possible the soil has contaminated in one way or another the grass, and this is the grass it is eating. So every animal is expected to have worms. Yes. This one is a duama, Nizan Plus. Mm -hmm. So a duama is very important for the good health of an animal. This is soothing oil. Animals are 
susceptible to injuries. Like I saw that your animal, yeah. it had yeah. previously been injured. Yes. Now, those injuries, if unattended to, may pose a very terrible danger to the animal from diseases like tetanus, bacterial infections, yes. can pass through that wound and endanger the animal's health. So soothing oil is very important. Mm -hmm. It's good, why? We use it for healing. That pressure place which has been traumatized by whichever object yes. in the course of the animal's life. It is so costly, very expensive mm -hmm. to, to, to treat an animal which has gone down. Yes. It may even take a whole week for it to come up. Yes. And you have to pay the vet. You have to feed for the medicine mm. and this administration. Yes. It's very costly. Mm. So it's better someone uses the mineral supplements, mm. not to wait for the animal to go down, to then it costs the vet. Yeah. To come on. Thank you very much. Mm. Oh, I can even, I don't know, to, to jump because of it. Jump, jump yeah. there. Let's like jump. I don't know why happy. Thank you so yeah, much, yeah. Sam. <laughs> Mr. Panyako, yes, sir. the cattle shed is ready. It's ready. But you can't use it immediately. We have to wait for it to dry. So now that you have expert advice, you Ex are happy. Exactly. I'm, I'm the one who's going to, to advise all people here in my area here, mm -hmm. even outside also. And Lona? The fry is sana, sana, sana. That's the idea, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Panyako is smiling and he's very, very happy. Yeah. We've done quite a lot in his farm, all the seeds, taking care of his cows. Mm -hmm. Lots of good work. Yeah. And who knows where in the next couple of years they will be. Yeah, and it's all courtesy of Shamba Shepherd. Shamba Shepherd is online. To learn more about today's topics, or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up, to get more information, get involved in discussions, and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter, at Shamba Shape Up.